All right, people, before we begin this bandless prediction, I just wanted to thank you guys for a half a million views. Yes, I recently hit half a mil views on my channel, and I appreciate every single one of you guys who actually take the time to watch all my videos. So, as you guys know, recently, Yu-Gi-Oh! 2 Draft League Season 1 has concluded, and also, this is the last video that you'll be getting from me for a little while. I'm actually taking a break from Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, once every while I need to take a break, refresh, come back, get my batteries recharged. So uh, when we come back, well, I'll be trying th some new things on the channel. So if you guys can continue, continue to support me, I'd be really appreciative. But thank you guys for a half a million views. Little did I know that you guys would actually watch all of these videos, the content, the work that I put into these videos, that it would eventually add up to half a million, and that's just amazing. So I appreciate every single one of you guys who support me, and every single one of you guys who are continuing to support me into the future as well. So thank you guys for watching my content. Thank you guys for all the support. I know I say that at the end of every video, but I absolutely mean it. So enjoy my bandless prediction. Thanks for all the support. All right, people. So here is my October balance prediction. Whenever we may get it, you know, a lot of uh, speculations and assumptions are like, hey, you know, the list is going to be on October. It's been three months, even though Konami's like, yeah, we're not going to do the whole three month thing anymore. And you know, last time we did a list was mid July, so maybe mid October. Anyway, lots of people were doing their bandless predictions, speculations, and stuff like that, and I was like, screw it. I'm about to take my break, if you guys did not know, and I wanted to go ahead and leave you guys up with something awesome. So, just to make it simpler, I'm a really long-winded person. I talk a lot, I go into a lot of detail about the decisions that I made and why I think that Konami will do this thing. So, if you're like, no, screw that, I don't want to listen to your long-ass video, then not only can you just pop in and see the gist right here, but the list will, of course, be in the description as well. So, you can just go ahead, pull it on the description, and look and be like, oh, that's what he thinks? Okay, I agree, I disagree, I don't care. Because it doesn't matter, because you clicked on the video, I get the view. So... <laughs> so you don't have to sit here and watch however long this video may be uh, for me to get the view. It counts. Alright, so instead of trying to be all long-winded, let's just hop into it. So I'm going to try to get in Konami's head. I'm going to try to be unbiased. I'm going to try to be uh, thoughtful. <laughs> and hopefully I can explain all my reasonings. So uh, let's start with ban cards. Really, there's only one card I can see ban, and really, that's just for Geki. Uh, I mean, at this point... I think Konami has seen the error of their ways when it comes to this card. And uh, they didn't really address it last time, but, you know, of course, this current list that we're on is the world's list. And, you know, what's the point of doing anything with Regeki when you're not going to be able to play at worlds anyway? Because it's, of course, banned in the OCG, so why do they care? Uh, of course, now they've gotten plenty of time to go ahead and look, and they can see that... Regeki is a very sacky card, you know, you need that risk versus reward factor. You can't just be able to just destroy all monsters on your opponent's side of the field and not have the risk of your own. I mean, even Torrental Tribute, while arguably a more powerful card than Regeki because you can play it during your opponent's turn, still has that risk factor of, yeah, you're destroying during your opponent's turn, but you're destroying your stuff too. While Regeki, we've seen this countless number of times where your opponent easily just rips a Regeki and sacks the hell out of you. And... It's interesting that Konami is experimenting with these cards, where they're just like, hey, let's try out Snare Steel. Okay, that was wrong. Hey, Regeki! That was wrong, you know? And uh, I get it. I get it. The destruction ratio between, you know, how many cards of mass destruction there are, it's understandable. Uh, I definitely think that Regeki should go. You know, it's, it's a Saki card. It's unnecessary. And that's the thing. It's an unnecessary Saki. It's not, it's not like it's a a decent kind of double-edged kind of sacky where it's kind of like, eh, well, yeah, I can see your point, but, you know, it's also a double There's no negative to this, you know? It's literally just, Regeki, your opponent. So, uh, definitely Regeki should go. I think a lot of people are in agreement here. And uh, hopefully we go ahead and see this card reband, you know? If you want to go ahead and put Dark Hole up to three, uh, which I'll be talking about later, then sure, that's fine. But Regeki should go. So um, let's go ahead and talk about other cards that people want to see banned, because I'm going to go ahead and go over those too. Uh, Royal Magical Library. All right. Ton of people. Ton of people like Royal Magical Library ban, Royal Magical Library ban. And uh, before this format, I was in the same boat. You know, we were just like, oh my god, Chicken Game is about to come out. And as soon as it comes out, we're about to get that Chicken Race, Chicken Game, FTK with, with Royal Magical Library, and it's just going to be terrible. And uh, what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. And, you know... It's not going to be on Konami's radar at all. Is that Saki? Oh, yeah. But Burn is Saki. Exodia is Saki. But do those decks do anything to warrant being 
addressed by Konami. No, and I definitely believe that uh, Royal Magic Library and this whole chicken game and chicken race FTK thing is in the same exact boat. So do not be surprised if Royal Magic Library does not get banned. I will not be because I was scared for it. I was like, oh, nip it in the butt before anything happens, and nothing happened. So, you know, we kind of panicked. We kind of 2012 this card and the whole deck and nothing. So, moving on. So, just, just for Geki Ban. Uh, next, let's go ahead and start off with the limited. So probably the biggest and most controversial thing of this format, uh, <laughs> what to do with Norden and Insta Fusion. You know, uh, we were all like, "Oh my God, Norden's about to be so dumb." And you know, while some people are like, "Oh, here comes the end," the other people are like, eh, "Ain't gonna do much." And did it do what it was supposed to do? Oh yes, definitely. Uh, Norden is just a ridiculous card where people are just like, "Oh, Norden is fair because it's kind of like the Altair Wolf." But no, it's not. Not only is it a, a special summon of a level 4 monster, but that revival from the graveyard too, you didn't conduct your normal summon. You know, I've seen a handful of times where people just go, oh, well, do my play, and you buy one of one of them, they've used up their normal summon. And then they just literally be like, alright, well, Instafusion, Norden, Norden, summon level 4, and Exton, 101, Castell, whatever. I've seen, you know, Instafusion, Norden, Norden, summon level 4, normal summon, and effect Vera, and trish your butt. It's just like, what? Like, no. Uh, Norden is definitely an unhealthy card, and to top it all off, we all know. We all know the Perform Mages and the Trick Clown and all that. Very powerful engine, you know? And when you really sit down and look at it, Trick Clown is its own kind of built-in Instafusion, you know? The pay a thousand, summon a level four, and it just, you know? But how do you get it? You gotta hit it twice, you know? You kill the Trick Clown, they're gonna pay the thousand, arrive it, and you hit it again. And you're pretty much done. You don't have to deal with it anymore, you know, unless they play some kind of, you know, Call the Haunted or some kind of revival card. It's pretty much in a graveyard, especially since no one's playing Thousand Blades. Until Norden, in which they would go Insta Fusion, Norden, Norden, summon that Trick Clown, XC into whatever, detach the Trick Clown, summon that back, and it's pretty much a reset button on Trick Clown. So not only is it powering up the Perform Mage Trick Clown engine, but it's just an entity of itself, no pun intended. So definitely, uh, it has to be addressed. And, you know, I'm not sure at what point they're going to go ahead and release this list. So now, for all we know, they could be like, all right, well, we're not doing all this for October, not November, not December. We'll wait to all the way until January. We don't know. But when they do it will definitely depend on when they've made their money, you know? For all we know, they can just be like, all right, well, we're not doing it till January. All right, in January. All right, we made our money off the tens. We're good. Uh... Let's just do what else you did. Norden ban. And I would love for Norden to be banned. I think that would be a great thing because Norden has proven time and time and time again that it's just that kind of card. Even if we do do the hit, which I'm predicting that they're going to do, it's still kind of bad. And what I predict is Insta Fusion down to one. Uh, lower the main deck consistency, pulling this off, you know? Especially with Super Poly ban. You know, everybody gets one Insta Fusion, you Insta Fusion that one Norden, and whether you play decks that can, you know, use and abuse it, similar to how Teller Knights use and abuse uh, their monsters by reviving it through, uh, you know, trap means, at least it's not as bad as just having multiple main deck Insta Fusions and increasing the consistency of pulling off that Norden. So, Insta Fusion has always been that very powerful card. Pay a thousand to summon an, uh, another monster from your extra deck to either Synchro or Xe with is a very powerful play, but Norden just takes the cake. And uh, I would totally be fine with Insta Fusion staying at three as long as Norden gets banned. So I don't believe they're going to do that. I think they're going to go ahead, and if this list is recent, they're probably going to go ahead and put Insta Fusion down. At this point, everybody has pretty much bought all the tins they want, and even if they put Insta Fusion down to one, you know, you need that one Norden buy a 10 you know it's simple as that so uh while the cells won't be as great as you know buying three tens for three norton and then you know three institutions um it's a little bit safer and more practical for the game and i think that this is one of those decisions uh similar to how six tenths was where it's just like hey here's six cents in a set buy the set we make our money and now we're gonna go ahead and get rid of it so um i would be totally fine if they wouldn't go ahead and ban norton and keep this infusion at three but i think it's probably going to be the other way around i think it's going to be infusion at one and norton's going to stay at three so i just want to go ahead and talk on that and that as well all right so that out of the way let's go ahead and start talking about some of these top decks because we've been literally like in the same format for at least a year now you know it's just been kind of repetitive if you really think about it so uh let's go ahead and start off with the number one deck let's go ahead and look at necros uh necros what do you do? They're too consistent, you know? And I don't think that Konami wants to kill them, you know? 
Um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe TCG is just like, you know, time to kill them, murder them. But, you know, out of the meta that it is uh, right now, Necros are still the newest deck. You know, they came out, and I want to say, like, earlier this year, first quarter of this year, and, you know, they, they've shown their dominance. They definitely have. And the only reason why they probably a, a target on their back is because how well they did at Worlds. But I don't believe that since they didn't win Worlds, they're not going to get x you know. Uh, we've seen that time and time again, that the first place deck, oh, it gets it. But the second place deck, no, nah, no, nah, not not even really hit, you know. Uh, even similar to how Worlds are last year, you know. Infernity won, you're dead. But the second place hat, nah, nah, we didn't, what, the Artifact Engine didn't get hit until, what, two lists later? So, I can easily see Necros living, but getting hit. So, uh, my put choices are definitely limited to one, Unicorn. Unicorn is the literally core of the deck. Uh, not only being able to abuse that Herald and get an additional search with the Kaleidomir, it's a level 4, it's a floodgate, it is literally uh, just the center point of the deck. And when you thought that that hit of Shrit last list was pretty good, yeah, you know, Unicor, that hand effect. This card, this card, then target a Necros card in the graveyard and add it back to your hand. So, yeah, go ahead and get that Shrit back. Like, no, 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 no. So, uh, definitely Unicor is probably the one that everybody is pointing their finger at. It's like Unicorn, Unicorn, Unicorn. Some people like a little bit of Trish, some people like a little bit of uh, other things, but definitely Unicorn should go down to one. And just to lower the consistency just a bit more, yet not have to go after Manju and Senju, just because the broad searchers uh, doesn't seem like TCG Konami is going to do. We're going to go ahead, and since we have set precedence not only with OCG, but this card is already on the list, which generally Konami likes to move cards that are already on the list, we're going to go ahead and put Brio down to one. Lower the consistency just a little bit more. We've seen countless times that even two Brio. We tried two Brio and that was a little bit too much. And I believe OCG did as well. And he decided to go ahead and put Brio down to one. Uh, and we have precedence from World. We clearly saw this deck do very well with the one Unicorn and the one Brio. So similar to how OCG kind of took what we did and we're like, hey, well, we have Shrit to one. And we saw OCG's list for October. They put Shrit down to one. Maybe we can go ahead and take some of the things from them. Uh, I've... At this point, I think that's okay, you know, seeing these two and maybe seeing if we need to take it any farther on the next list. Uh, I know a ton of people are going set precedence of cycle off of those OCG lists, but I personally don't think that cycle's that bad. And, uh, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't find cycle any worse than any other mirror, so I really can't put a target on cycle just for set precedence sake. I mean, if they want to go ahead and hit cycle because it's over in the OCG and let's just copy them, then fine. But I... It, it's not as bad as any, as any other mirror, so I just don't see the point of putting the target on uh, Cycles back when, you know, I can just as easily see Kaleido or uh, just regular Necros mirror getting it, because they're all powerful in their own ways. You know, it's just like, oh, well, it's a monster reborn. Yeah, but you still got a tribute from your hand or field. So, you know, they're all powerful in their own ways. So, yeah, definitely these two. Just lower the consistency of the deck just a little bit. Uh, we probably don't have to take it with the Nanju and Sanju too far. Uh, and definitely by, you know, hitting the Insta Fusion and lowering the Necros and Unicor, we kind of step back from that uh, rank 4 p possibilities that Necros could do. Because that's definitely another possibility that they can do. So, uh, yeah, uh, Necros out of the way. Let's go ahead and move on to Burning Abyss. You know, uh, there's a ton of things about Burning Abyss as well. You know, recently popped up in... OCG, and it's been doing kicking butt over there, but I kind of think that it's time to go ahead and step away. Uh, they've gone a while without any direct hits, you know. The only thing that got hit was Tour Guide. Everything else in Burning Abyss is still there. And at the point that they'll probably make this list, once again, it's another card in the tin. So I don't think they're going to absolutely X out Burning Abyss and, you know, sell a couple more tins. But it's definitely time to go ahead and get it addressed. So, you know, people are like, well, sir, you know, Graf, no, Dante. Um, I think that it's definitely Graf. And Graf is powerful because it summons from the deck. You know, it, it's the enabler that allows you to do those additional plays to set up the fire. Like, it's the graph. And while most people say Sir because Sir loops with Dante, you really only need one Sir. And Sir is not the best starting card. You know, it's Sir, when you really look at it, it's not too terrible. I mean, besides Dante, Sir, Dante, Sir, Dante, Sir, but you're not really, you know, getting anywhere with that and burning this. But you better be damned that if a Dante detaches and mills a Graf, then Graf is going to summon the Sir, and then, you know, it, all hell is going to break loose. It also uh, sets up that intro play for that Fire Lake, you know? If you can just go, you know, special summon Burning Abyss, normal summon uh, Graf, Xing Dante detach, mill that Graf, and 
will detach that, or slash mill that graph, that graph is going to summon you another burning abyss. You're already set up with the fire lake, you know? Well, on the other hand, sir, you know, unless you have a burning abyss in that graveyard, you're really not doing much with it. So just because graph is the enabler that summons from the deck, which is probably, arguably, the place that Konami doesn't want you to summon that's frowned upon, uh, graph is the one that's tied on his back. Um, I really don't have any other sits. I'm, I don't think sir is necessary, sir. Uh, you don't want to kill the deck. So graph F1 is understandable, but sir, you don't want to kill that. And Dante, you know, make them money off the tins. Let's just go ahead and see how graph is. But I actually have an indirect hit. And definitely uh, one of the things that I want to point at on this list. And I want to go ahead and talk about. Sending to the graveyard is getting to be a huge problem. And whether it be looking at, uh, you know, the pendulum decks playing uh, Zephyros and returning their pendulum cards back to their hand or sending Trick Clown. Uh, sending to the grave is just being a very, very set-up combo piece. And as we know from the past list, we had a very important monster in this whole sending to the graveyard theme be banned. And it's understandable. It is totally understandable that level chain should be banned, and it's currently banned. And, you know, I was clouded by my own judgments of like, well, I play a Ubel deck, and it sucks, but, you know, I'm in the same boat. And while I may not be doing the plays that other decks do, I, it's an enabler. It's literally an enabler. Uh, we, have, of course, have a very powerful card that pretty much has the same boat and that we use it for, uh, i.e. Foolish, and it's limited to one. So instead of a, a Foolish, how about a Walking Foolish that you will always pretty much have access to because it's in your toolbox of rank fours? Like, it's definitely understandable why Laval Wall Chain is banned. But despite Laval Wall Chain being banned, we still have to point a finger at one more card that's pretty much in the same boat, and I'm saying Mathematician. Mathematician is also limited to one in the OCG. And as we saw from this previous format, whether it be Shadals, whether it be Burning Abyss, or whether it be just blatantly after hitting Teller Knights, what are they going to do with that? Uh, Trick Clown. Mathematician is literally just the next setup card. As long as it's level 4 or lower monster, you get to go ahead and send it to the graveyard. That is a very powerful play. And whether it be for synchroing or exceeding or just set up plays, uh, Mathematician is definitely worthy of being hit. And it's kind of been skating on the list. You know, even the liberal OCG hit it. You know, even in OCG it's at 1. And it's been popping up here as well. Uh, we've definitely been seeing it. So it's a nice little indirect hit to not only Burning Abyss, who of course would use the Mathematician to uh, send a Burning Abyss a monster and set up their plays, but also Shadals as well, who also use this card. And Trick Clown plays in the possible future, depending on that. So I'm saying that Lavalo Chain, stay banned. Foolish, stay at one. But Mathematician, you're in the exact same boat. You are literally, as long as it's a level 4 lower monster, you're a walking foolish. That when it's destroyed battle, you get to go ahead and draw a card. Like, they made their their money off of this, and this card is definitely, it was broken and powerful to begin with. It's definitely worthy of being limited down to one. Alright, so went ahead and addressed that. So that's kind of like a Shadal-esque Burning Abyss hit. So I think with these two at one for Burning Abyss, I think that'll clean them up a little bit, lessen them. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, address... Cleese. Let's go ahead and point a finger at Cleese for a second. So, Cleese haven't done much, you know, uh, the occasional top at regionals, but there's definitely a big glaring problem that everybody in their mother seems like they're yelling at. Yes, Tower Turbo. I know, Tower Turbo sucks, and people are trying to figure out what to do against Tower Turbo. What do we point a finger at? No, it's a scout. No, we should ban towers. No, we did it. People, the answer is simple. Just address the problem that occurred before the deck existed. What made the deck of Tower Turbo exist? What turned clean to Tower Turbo? Yeah, Wavering Eyes. And when you really look at it, Wavering Eyes is a very powerful card that definitely deserves the warrant to be at one. And I know you're probably saying, like, oh, well, you know, it definitely helps out Pendulum deck, so they're not going to hit it. See, the problem with that is that not only does it help Pendulum deck, but it hinders it too. You know, it was supposed to be that kind of like, oh, well, it's kind of like an anti mirror match side card, and it literally just turned into an enabler card. It literally turned uh, Cleese into Tower Turbo. It, Without Wavering Eyes, there is no Tower Turbo. The deck is too inconsistent, not worth the time. Not only uh, that, but, you know, there's a ton of people saying, like, oh, well, Heavy Storm can't come back because you can destroy your own Pendulum Scales and be an enabler with Heavy Storm. You know, you can go ahead and destroy that uh, that Flame uh, Perform Mage and get that. Wavering Eyes does the same thing, except instead of just, you know, Heavy Storming your own Pendulum Scales and getting nothing in return, you get to go ahead and Wavering Eyes destroy your Scales slash destroy your opponent's Scales 
and go ahead and get searches and plus and stuff and stuff. Uh, it's terrible for the mirror match. It literally takes all skill out of any mirror match. And at least Cleese are the only real competitive pendulum based deck because if this game was more pendulum based, I could easily see this card being banned just because of how just game shaking it is. You know, if it's a mirror match between or uh, just two pendulum decks doing against each other, whoever pulls off the wavering eyes essentially wins. And it's a, literally an auto win button. It's a literally unfair card. And like I said, it's that additional search power. You know, it. Wouldn't be bad if you would just be like, all right, well, my pendulum scales, but then they just had to add that, oh, add a pendulum monster from your main deck to your hand. They just had to add that because when you really don't count the resources of the pendulum scales going back to extra because you're planning on pendulum summoning them back anyway, you're literally one for one with the wavering eyes. And you're probably going to be searching, if you're playing Cleese, that scout, scout continue the place. If we hit Wavering Knight and lower it down to one, where, you know, it's once per duel, where if you pull it off, then hey, you got lucky, you know, it's just as bad as getting that one insta fusion, then that's fine. But with multiple Wavering Eyes, that's what created Tower Turbo. If Wavering Eyes goes down to one, I promise you, there will be no Tower Turbo. Whoever tries to do Tower Turbo, you will fall on your face, because it's not worth it. Your consistency drops immensely. Uh, I don't think that you have to point fingers. I don't think that you have to point fingers at Towers, because Towers really is not that bad of a monster as a boss monster for Cleese. if it wasn't like, oh, bam, first turn Towers, Tower Turbo style, you know? So you, if a Klee player eventually plays it, then hey, more power to them, whatever, you know? But that first turn Tower tower Turbo drop, that wouldn't be a thing about Wavering Eyes. You don't really have to hit Scout, because Scout, at this point, if you hit Scout down the one, the deck's dead. And deck doesn't deserve to be dead, you know? It didn't win Worlds, so no. And... Summoners are, it, that broad searching, like I said, that broad searching card, I, cards, they really haven't been hitting as of late. So definitely go ahead and point out the finger at Wavering Eyes is totally, totally justified. So I'm going to have to say Wavering Eyes limited to one. Alright, so uh, I'll go ahead and address this other Klee card well, since we're here. So to two, this one turn. I was debating on this. I was like, well, how bad is this one turn? And it's supposed to be the replacement, the kind of more balanced version of Skill Drain. And in a sense it is, it's just the way that it's being uh, kind of like a floodgate, but it's not bad, but it's not good either. It, it, it's, it's, it's definitely deserving of its two spot, you know. I don't think anybody has been hitting on lose one turn too much as of late, and we've only seen it in like Klee's. Uh, and the thing is, and that made me want to go ahead and just be like, you know, put your two, is that the clean decks that are more defensive Klee's, as we call them, uh, they've been playing through these. And wow, some people are like, oh, it clogs. It's just another floodgate card, you know. So, and it just seems like sometimes we just gotta go ahead and take the bat to the knee when it comes to cleansing their floodgates, you know. And whether it be vanities or skill drains, just like, all right, well, lose one turn. Is it worthy to be at one? Is it in the same boat as vanities or skill drain? No. But is it a card that should be at three? No. Therefore, it should be at two. Uh, so that's all the hits I have for Cleese. One Wavering Eyes down to one and lose one turn down to uh, two. I was thinking about maybe Sacrifice, but I really don't see... Konami giving them back sacrifice right now. Uh, maybe when Klee's stop topping at all, but this doesn't seem like this will be the list where Konami will be like, alright, you can have stop some Klee cards back. You know, they're going to get hit, but they're not going to get torn apart. Alright, so I guess we'll go ahead and move on to. Let's do Shadal. Shadals. So, uh, Shadals, of course, have been here for a while, and they constantly evolve with whatever. Uh, light engine that they can find to go ahead and suck the teat of construct, you know, whether it be the artifact engine or the star surf engine or, of course, the clown perform age engine. Uh, they have uh, literally evolved into various different types of decks, and at this point in time, we're pretty much done with them. You know, uh, Shadals have pretty much lived their time in their essentially in the same boat as Teller Knights, except for, you know, Teller Knights won Worlds while Shadals couldn't even win Worlds because of what happened to them in OCG. So I think it's time to go ahead and start taking a step to that. So literally when it comes to Shadals, there's two cards that everybody's looking at. You know, there's definitely two. It's either Construct or El Shadal Fusion. Uh, personally, I think it's Construct. You know, uh, everybody complains about El Shadal Fusion because you can go El Shadal Fusion and choose a Construct with the Construct to, to push for the OTK. And it's like, oh my god, you can do that during the battle phase so you can just push for the OTK. But if they only had one Construct, then what are they, you know, El Shadal Fusing into? So personally, I would to be totally fine if Construct was limited to one and El Shadal Fusion stayed at three because Construct is the sacky one. Not only does it uh, push for the most damage, being able to be a catastrophe for all special summon monsters and set up your play with the additional general monster being sent from the deck to the graveyard, 
but it's literally just the boss monster of the deck. And as we clearly saw, uh, if you just X out Construct, like in OCG, there is no shell. So I don't think we need to take it to the extreme of uh, OCG where we ban Construct, but I don't think Construct is the card it should be at 2 either. See, the problem with Construct at 2 is that that whole OTK play that you were worrying about where the Construct goes into the Construct and hits you and hits you, with 2 Construct you could still do that. So, Construct can't tag into Construct, that's the problem. Because Construct is going to be your light, so as long as you have another Shadal monster, there's another Construct. So, uh, definitely Construct is deserving of its spot at 1. The setup plays are too much, it's literally boss monster. You get one Construct, that's it. You know, use it wisely, and if need be, go ahead and play some revival cards. Play that Call of the Haunted, and play that, uh, you know, Oasis, you know? Uh, will Shadows be dead with one Construct? No, they'll just be different. And uh, just to make sure, you know, that, you know, this is our hit for for uh, Shadows, uh, it's had El Shadow Fusion down to 2. Just a little bit of consistency of that play, just a little bit, you know? Uh, like I said, I would not be... Uh, remissed if they just went Constructor 1 and El Shadal Fusion still at 3, because I'm okay with that. But I kind of felt like, you know, it's the first Shadal hit. They're probably going to go ahead and put it down to 2, especially with set precedence on the OCG side. That, you know, they'll just be like, alright, down to 2, and, you know, if uh, Shadals don't really do much and we can start giving the cards back, then here you go. There's your El Shadal Fusion back up to 3, you know. But that Construct definitely deserves a spot at 1. There is no doubt in my mind that Construct is the one that should go down to 1. Alright, so... We talked about Necros, we talked about BA, we talked about Cleaves, talked about Shadals. Alright, well, let's get to the deck that won Worlds and is going to get slaughtered. Let's go ahead and talk about Satellers. So it's going back and forth between, you know, what cards in Tellers Knight should get hit. You know, they won Worlds, they're going to get it. No, they're not going to get it. Konami's not going to do it. They're going to do it. They're going to they're gonna hit. They're going to hit Tellers because, as I stated before, the deck that wins Worlds, it doesn't even matter about second place. So, you know, Necros, if ne I was hoping that Necros were going to win so they would get slaughtered, but no. The deck that wins world, first place, is the one deck that gets murdered. And murdered is uh, kind of blatant. I mean, do they, like, make that deck absolutely fucking playable where you can never play that deck again? No. But they make it so it's really not competitive anymore to an extent, you know? Uh, what they did to the past couple of decks, i.e. being, you know, Dragon Rulers and, and, and uh, Infernity and Insectors, uh, they pretty much, you know, as a deck as a whole, yeah. It's still there. It's still there. It's, it's probably not as consistent as you want it to be, and it's probably not uh, doing the plays that you want it to be. But it's still there. You know, you can still play it. It's just not going to be competitive anymore. So, you know, there's a handful of people who are like, all right, well, all tired of one. No, the deck is dead. You know, you can't just go all tired. That's it. You know, there's going to be a little bit more of that. So, first, you you got to do hit the consistency. You got to go after the consistency. You got to go after the enablers, and you have to go after the major play that makes the deck broken. You know, there's a handful of people that are putting fingers at Nova and being like, oh, Teller Knights are good because of their stun because they have Nova. And it's like, no, it's not what makes Teller Knights good. What makes Teller Knights good is their resource management. You know, not only do they go ahead and go, you know, Altair summon that Deneb, which is going to be a plus, but then the Deneb is going to search you another Altair, which is a plus. You go into that Triv and recycle them, Fiendish Chain them, call the Hunters and Oasis. That is what makes Teller Knights good. So, first, let's go ahead to the consistency. And when it comes to the consistency, there's literally one finger to point at, you know, limited to one, Deneb. Uh, Deneb is definitely the choice that we're going to go ahead and put down to one. Uh, yeah, you, know, you only have one Deneb, use it wisely. And I know you're probably saying, like, oh, Deneb gets banished by, like, you know, Rhapsody. Then, oh, my God, that's it. I mean, look at the Zectors. Sorry, you only got one uh, Hornet. Yeah, and when that one Hornet is gone, I know it sucks, but, you know, you're a deck that one world. So, uh, you may get your cards back eventually in a couple of years. Sorry, Teller Knights, but uh, definitely Deneb is the enabler. So we're just going to go ahead and lower the consistency of the Neb a little bit, you know. And just like with Insectors, you still have some, you know, other enablers to get you set up, you know, such as a Mathematician or a Nuclei. Uh, so while I'm going to go ahead and talk about Teller Knights, let's go ahead and talk about Rhoda, because there's a couple of people that are like, hey, you know, Rhoda should go back down to 1. Like I said, there's no precedence for Rhoda to go down to 1 besides OCG, and like I said, OCG is in a completely different boat. It definitely seems like, as of late, Konami... TCG has been stepping away from broad search cards in which everybody can have their search card at 3. And whether it be Tanky or Rhoda or Summoner's Art or whatever, um, if it's a search card, it's okay. So instead of just broadly hitting Rhoda and hurting every single warrior deck, future, past, or current, it's much, much easier just to go ahead and hit the Teller Knight cards, which is only dealing with Teller Knights. So uh, Rhoda will probably stay at 3. You'll still have your 3 Unuks, but 1 Deneb. And whether you go ahead and go Unuk, send the Deneb, or Rhoda, search for that Deneb, you still have your plays. You're okay. 
But that's not enough. That's not enough. Because if that's all they do, then they're not taking it a step further. They're not uh, really uh, breaking the deck's leg to say to make it uncompetitive. So we need to take it a little bit step further. So definitely, we went ahead and hit the Hornet of the deck. Now we need to hit the Dragonfly of the deck. So definitely to two, I have Altair. And uh, while putting it down to one would definitely kill the deck, you know, it's not as uh, flexible as uh, as Deneb is. Uh, just how the deck is played, where it's good, you know, you go Vega, Altair, Altair, some Denebs, you know, Cert, go ahead and XC. Uh, it would just slow down the plays where you're not just going the constant Altair, search, Altair, 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 Altair. You get two, you know, you have two, that's it. You know, and whether you have to dive Luzermo or play any other place to go ahead and put the Altairs back, um, you're at least you're not overextending. Because one Altair, and that's that's too much of a hit. But two Altairs, I can see that. And I can easily see, you know, Altair not getting hit, or Altair getting hit down to two and eventually moving back up to three. But I think that uh, Altair to two is a correct hit. Deneb to one is a correct hit. Because you see, but one more hit. We need one more hit. And it's pretty much the broken play. It's, it's the... It's the cherry on top of the ice cream that we need to go ahead and look at and i was saying that this card was a problem to begin with before even worlds i was hoping that they were going to hit this card before worlds but they didn't and we saw the havoc that it caused trev yep trev is the one that should be hit down to one uh i mean look at it it's literally like a giant true name slash compulse for everything like when it just summons just everything back to hand and that definitely that helps teller knights be teller knights you know, it's bad enough that one triv, but triv after triv after triv, it's it's too much. And as clearly uh, Konami and all the rest of us can see when it comes to Teller Knights, this is the card, you know. Would they even be really running cards like, you know, Call of the Hunters and Oasis His and Phoenix Chains? Probably, but it doesn't help that triv is literally just putting them all back to be reused later with that resource management. So Trib is the one to go ahead and go down to one. And that's, uh, that's as far as I think they're going to take with Teller Knights, you know. The Neb down to one, or Terry to two. If that and Triv do one. I'm pretty positive about the Deneb and the Triv. Not too much about the Altair, but I could possibly see it. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, say it right now. So Altair down to two. Uh, and Roto stay at three, and that'll be great. <laughs> you know, because it's not fair that all the other Roto, I mean, Roto related decks, Warrior related decks get hit just because Teller Knights. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, pretty much got all the hits out of me. You know, I hit all five of the top decks. Uh, as remotely as I had to go ahead and hit them. So uh, let's just get a little bit liberal with it. Let's go ahead and see uh, Konami be a little bit flexible, maybe. All right. So starting it off, Dandelion. Uh, I think at this point, they're done with the plan engine. You know, they've been slowly stepping back, and whether it be, you know, uh, Glow Up or Spore or, uh, you know, Lone Fire, they've been stepping away from it. And they knew that, you know, when they hit that hell out of that plant engine, that, you know, they're eventually going to give the cards back, and they pretty much gave every single card back except for Dandy. And uh, Dandy's really not that bad of a card. I mean, if anything, if you're going to point fingers at something that's, oh my god, it summons tokens, ooh, then why a scapegoat back at three, you know? So I think they're going to go ahead, this is going to be the time where they're going to look at the list and they're going to be like, what the, what the, what is this? What is this, another plan engine card? Like, whatever, Dandy to two, and eventually the three, because who cares, you know? Ooh, you're summoning tokens, fluff tokens, so good, like, no. So, uh, Dandy, it's about your time to go ahead and go back up to two. And also, this is another card, Blast from the Past, uh, Dragon Ruler, Debris Dragon. Uh, it's another one of those casualty cards that got hit in the whole uh, Dragon Ruler era where, you know, it was at two, and they put it down to one because, of course, you can just summon a Dragon Ruler and Debris Dragon can summon another Dragon going to Black Rose or going to Star Eater. So, they kind of just hit uh, Debris Dragon along with all the other Dragon Rulers. But the Dragon Rulers are damned. And they said they've been letting up, you know. I mean, they for goodness sakes, they unbanned Dragon Ravine, and that's slowly been getting up, going up. So, what's the next card to look at? Debris Dragon. And you know, it's a, of sure it's another card of the Plan Engine, but like I said, they're stepping away from that too. So these two cards, they can go up to two, and possibly even three on the next list because they're not relevant anymore when it comes to synchro mechanic. I mean, it's literally the weakest mechanic in the game right now, and they're just, you know, they they've been they, their time is up. You know, they've served their time. You know, the decks that. Uh, that they were in and used and abused are either gone or outpaced. So, yeah, I can definitely see these two going back up to two. And another deck that I've seen 
uh, definitely served their time. You know, they've been slowly uh, giving decks that won worlds back their cards after a nice grip of time. I can probably see Hornet going up back up to two. Uh, just to test it, just to test it. Uh, just to go ahead and see if that is okay. Test the waters. Of course, uh, OCG does have uh, multiple Hornets. Uh, but it's Dragonfly that's the problem. As we know, Dragonfly is the enabler. And literally, this would just help their consistency a little bit. You know, especially with uh, putting Mathematician down to one. Uh, having two Hornets wouldn't be too bad. That's actually really not even uh, giving you much since I'm already lowering your consistency a little bit. But I guess you could play Armageddon Knight. But sure. So, yeah, I think it's about time. It's been, like, what, three years? Three years is okay. Uh, I mean, maybe not. I mean, it depends. I, I don't know. As we know, there's a, there's uh, some decks that were a little bit saltier about than others, you know. But, uh, you know, decks that were more around that time, such as uh, Glads and Black Wings and uh, Herald. Uh, well, not Herald, but uh, Hyperion Agents. They've got their cards back, too. So, um... You know, with the cleaning up of Black Wings and with the cleaning up of uh, Glads. Yeah, sure. One to two, or to three, and then probably as far as we're going to take it. I doubt we're ever going to do multiple dragonflies. We know we know what that is. So, yep. All right. And, uh, yeah, those are cards at two. So, on to three. Dragon's Veen, that, that's probably, like, the easiest call. I mean, they went one, and I was like, oh, they're going to just drop it up. Then jump it up to three, and they're like, no, no, two, 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 a little bit of dragon? Like, no, no, no. So, there's some, like, alright, it's great, dragon is back up to three. Dragon rulers are banned, as long as they're banned, who cares? So, uh, stay banned, dragon rulers, and dragon Veen can go back up to three, and that is fine. Um, and as I said, when it comes to Dark Hole and Regaki, you can have three Dark Holes, you know? And I know, you're probably thinking, well, when it comes to Dark Hole, it's just like Regeki if you have no monsters, but... It, you have no monsters, you know? It's not like, oh, I have monsters, you have monsters, alright, I'm gonna regeki you and I'm gonna attack for game, you know? You gotta go ahead and take that risk of reward with it too. So, uh, I can definitely see Regeki getting banned, Dark Hole going up to three if Konami wants to sit down and actually look at it. But I also wouldn't be surprised if Regeki just stays at one and Dark Hole stays at two. You know, it's kinda like the whole BLS Chaos Sorcerer thing where they're just there, you know? BLS at one, Chaos Sorcerer at two, and that's just how it's been. So, I can probably see that Konami is just having Regeki and Dark Hole in the same exact boat, but I would be totally fine if the Saki Regeki was gone. You want to go ahead and wipe monsters in the field, then how about you risk your own as well? How about you just don't throw the Regeki at me? So, definitely Regeki ban and Dark Hole to three. Alright, and Shrag to three. Yeah. Uh, it's about time. You know, we put Gordas up to three, and Shrag is they're in the same boat. I would argue that Shrag is stronger, but uh, we've seen Gores get like emergency hit down to why not try gradually got hit as well and Trank has just been sitting up too. No one plays it at all So uh, it's not bad to go ahead and put it back up to three hours first I was like, I don't know, but then you know, yeah, you know, you want to play Trank, play Trank, you know, you want to play Gores, play Gores But no complaints. No one, no one's playing it and it's literally been sitting on the list and out of everything that's semi-limited at the current moment It's probably one of the more lenient cards and the last card to go ahead and uh, put it up to three is Xi'an. You know, uh, they didn't really do anything with Xi'an this past list. Maybe they thought that, hmm. You know, they went, you know, one to two, and then they were, I thought they were going to go two to three because no one in the world is playing Six Samurais. Or maybe they didn't want to do anything for the Worlds list because, you know, they didn't want Six Samurais to show up at Worlds uh, like that. And we've been kind of lenient with both TCG and OCG when it comes to uh, six Samurais. I mean, I'm not saying, like, oh, yeah, let's ban unban Gateway. No, 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 no. Because three Xi'an with three Rotas and three ga uh, and Gateway, like, oh, no, no, no. But uh, Xi'an at three wouldn't do anything different than Xi'an at two. You know, without Gateway, I've never... I've seen them do two first-turn Xi'ans, but I've never seen them be able to pull off three with the resources in their hand. So I don't think that it's bad to go ahead and uh, put Xi'an up to three, as long as Gateway is banned. So... You know, that's just another card that we can go ahead and eventually move off the list, just like Goyo. <laughs> so, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk about the last couple of cards that you guys are probably like, Hey, what about those cards? I'm going to go ahead and talk about them too. So, uh, I already talked about Rotom. Rotom should stay at 3. Chen should stay banned. Foolish should stay at 1. There's a couple of people who are like, oh, well, Foolish should be banned because, you know, like, then they didn't even look at Mathematician. Like, Foolish is just as consistent as Mathematician. You get it when you get it, you know? So... Why should this be, you know, banned and this be at three? It doesn't make any sense. Like, this should be at one, this should be at one. You get one. So, 
uh, uh, just lower the consistency of the monster, uh, the cards that set up your graveyard for your consistency sake. You know, your enablers. All right, so this is also a discussion that people have been talking about. You know, they're like, well, OCG has Harpy's Feather Duster, so how come we can't have something along those lines, Harpy's Feather Duster, every storm? The reason for that is the background ratio. I mean, yes, OCG has Harpy's Feather Duster, but they also have three Compulse and three Bottomless and three Torrental. So, unless we want all that background to come back, it's just not worth it, you know? And the the background right now, it's actually a, at a pretty balanced state. You know, the cards that are at one have earned their spot at one. And if I had to go ahead and give up my Heavy Storm, you know, my one Heavy Storm, to make sure that, you know, you don't have, what, you're, what they have, two Bottomless, two Torrentals, three Compulses, you know, Solemn Judgment, two Solemn Warnings, like, nah, 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 you know. So, definitely, the trade is worth it, and it's not worth you know, putting it up. Uh, oh, there's one more card I wanted to go ahead and talk about because there's just a couple of people that wanted to go ahead and talk about that. A ton of people saying this card as well, so we'll get to that. So, these two should stay banned. You know, with what background that we have, these two should stay banned. Alright, let's go ahead and talk about these two. Without a confirmed reprint for the errata, I don't understand how you guys are predicting that this card, these two are going to come off the list. It doesn't make any sense. Like, what, you think that Konami's going to unban them and be like, well, you don't have a confirmed reprint, so go ahead and run around with the errata effect on you and you can play the cards. Like, no, they're not going to do that. <coughs> and while Konami allowed you to play the old versions as long as you have the errata, there's no point to uh, just causing that discomfort uh, without a confirmed reprint. So... These two are going to just stay on the list until eventually we get it. And uh, while this one, Demok, the eroded version is not as bad as Chaos Emperor, uh, they're both about three in OCG, the eroded versions. But for now, nope, you're just going to remain staying banned. Alright, controversial card number one. Free my nigga Stratos. I doubt it. I doubt it, you know. At this point, there's probably something up there we don't know. We don't know it's all behind closed doors, but there's probably disdain for heroes. There's probably disdain for Stratos. And, you know... There's just no precedent. I mean, you could probably call them until the cows come home, but until I actually see, I can't predict them. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna waste my breath and you know get the prediction incorrect every single time and look like a butt every single time I do a balance prediction trying to predict a card that I just can't see. I cannot see Stratos coming off. Maybe they just don't like him. It doesn't matter. You know, we're not freeing nigga Stratos. He really doesn't bring anything new to the table. I really don't know why you're crying about him because literally you're just going to throw him in your dank claw dot deck anyway. And he really doesn't bring anything new to the table for that deck anyway. And while I would love for Stratos to come off ban and you actually turn into your more aggressive version of your deck instead of that helmet ass piece of crap dank claw dot deck that I hate. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You're just going to sit there with Denklaw. You're going to sit there like a Bujins. And Stratos doesn't bring anything new to the table. Don't give me that whole, like, oh, I want to go into the Wind Mass hero. I don't want to use Zevion. You're not going to go into him. Don't fucking lie. You're just whining about Stratos because you're whining about Stratos. And it's really getting sad that one of the most consistent decks in all the freaking Yu-Gi-Oh! is whining about a card that they don't even need. You have three Rota. Three Hero Lives. Three E-Call. Three Shadow Mists. Three Blazemen to send the Shadow Mist. Like, you're so freaking consistent that it's not even funny. Yet you're complaining about some card that's not even necessary. And I'm, I'm, I get sick of it because it gets really annoying to hear everybody whine. Free my nigga Stratus, free my nigga Stratus, free my nigga Stratus. For one thing, he ain't your nigga. You know, there's nothing nigga about Stratus, so don't even give me that. Too, he doesn't need to be freeze. He he was he was justifiably hit, and just like when it comes to uh, heavy storm and and the backward ratio, maybe they just don't want to unban them because of this no, no this effect that whole oh, no heroes in the field destroying the back row because when it's summon period when it's normal special summon so maybe just like similar to how it uh, won uh, the nationals in OCG that end phase strato summon pop you know maybe they don't want that maybe they don't want you to search for any more than you have to. I don't know. I don't know. I don't work for Konami, but, you know, whining and complaining about it every single goddamn list gets actually kind of tiring. You know, it's really sad. You know, make peace. Make peace. Make peace. Make peace. Shut the hell up and make peace. Done. All right. And last controversial card, Book of Moon. No. No. You know, people are like, oh, Book of Moon can go up to two. It's not that bad of a card. It's actually gotten crap. No. Book of Moon is just as powerful as Compulse, Bottomless, Toronto in its own respect. It, yes, it's a Neg 1, but it's probably the most powerful Neg 1 and easily can uh, either turn a duel around for defensively, offensively. Book of Moon is a very powerful card, as we know. It's war it's warranted spot, and the thing is, is that we tried Book of Moon at higher numbers. We tried it, and we've shown that whatever Book of Moon is at, that's where people will play it. So Book of Moon's earned its spot at 1, especially with, you know, 
uh, it being grouped in the back row with, along with Compulse and Bombers, and you know people are saying Compulse too. Compulse is good; it goes up and down uh, depending on the format. You know, the only reason why Compulse isn't good is because the decks that are being played right now or competitively aren't. It's not good against, you know? And sometimes Torrental isn't good, and sometimes Bottomless isn't good. But just because particular cards aren't good for that particular format doesn't mean that they just they can just go free because, you know, they're not good. It doesn't make any sense, you know? But it doesn't matter if it's what format it is. Book of Moon is always good, you know? You can say, like, well, you know, Compulse ain't good right now, so it can go. But I don't think anybody has ever said that Book of Moon isn't good unless they're just being bad. Because, yes, it's a neg one, but it's a very skillful card. It can easily win games. It can easily defend you from losing. And even when you're putting up that Royal Decree against all your traps, you still got that Book of Moon to save you. And it can save you. So, I don't get why everybody is saying that Book of Moon should go up to two. We tried it at two. No, it deserves a spot at one. It's earned it. So, definitely Book of Moon stay at one. So, this video was long-winded. I thought it was. I, I knew it was going to be. But I hope that I got all my points across. So, hopefully we get the new list soon. Tell me what you guys think of my list. Tell me what you guys uh, think uh, in the comment section below. And give me your list as well, you know. And uh, I will go ahead and respond to any comments if need be. So, I said before, I'm taking a little break from my channel. Um, of course, if they do post up the list in my break, then I would definitely do a video of it. And when we come back... Uh, hopefully I will go ahead and have a general idea of what I want to do different with my channel because I feel like my channel is getting kind of stale and dry and uh, you know turning into more of a job than anything so hopefully uh, with my little break and brainstorming what to do and change hopefully we'll go ahead and come back we'll have a fresh list we'll have you know a fresh Yu-Gi-Oh because and hopefully maybe a little bit of a fresh meta because you know the game is getting kind of stale it definitely is so anyway I hope that you guys enjoyed this video Tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. All the support. Uh, of course, League is over. So if you unsubscribe because League is over, then hopefully then I can just leave you guys with this. You guys watch this uh, Banish Prediction and be on your way. So thank you for supporting me uh, during this time, this temporary time that you're staying. And I would really appreciate it if you stay. And if not, then I would appreciate it if you ever come back. But I appreciate your time being here. All right, people. Thanks for watching.